by hand From mighty mountains to the raging sea To every leaf on every single tree It's in the holy book Just open up and take a look Many years ago, in a land called Egypt, there lived a very mean king. Egyptian kings were called pharaohs. Faster, better, more. The Pharaoh made all of the people of Israel living in Egypt work as slaves. They had to build the buildings and lift many heavy things. They had no time to rest and little to eat. They were not free and they were very unhappy. But the worst thing of all was, one day the Pharaoh decided that the firstborn sons of the Israelites would be killed. Oh no! They won't get my baby. I'll find some way to save him. Jochebed, the mother of Moses, decided to float her baby down the river. Shh, don't be afraid. I won't let the Pharaoh hurt you. Your sister Miriam will be right here to make sure you're safe. baby needs a home. I'll take him to the palace and take care of him there. Excuse me, princess. If you need a nurse for the baby, I know a good one who lives nearby. Her name is Jochebed. Thank you. Bring her to the palace. They named the baby Moses, and he was raised in the Pharaoh's palace as an Egyptian. But Jochebed was near Moses while he was a child to teach him right from wrong. Ha! <laughs> Moses, time for your lessons. Now, did you do your homework? Sure I did. When I went out this morning, I saw a slave master hitting one of the Israelites. He was wrong, Moses. All people should be treated with respect. And Jochebed taught him that the Israelites in Egypt were unhappy because they were not free. Many years later, when Moses grew up to be a strong young man, he came upon some Egyptians who were treating people very poorly. You're lazy. Get up, get up, and get back to work right now or else. Leave him alone. You shouldn't treat anyone like that. He deserves it. He's pretending he's hungry and tired because he's too lazy to work. I'm teaching him a lesson about... Leave him alone.
It was very unusual for someone to help an Israelite like that. Everyone told each other what happened. Moses was sure he had done the right thing. But he knew the Pharaoh would be very angry. So Moses left Egypt all by himself, knowing that he was really an Israelite. He wanted to go to another land where he would not have to see his people be treated so badly. After traveling for 40 days, Moses found himself in the land of Midian. In Midian, Moses got married and had a family. He lived in Midian for so long that he almost forgot about Egypt and about the poor Israelites. Until one day, Moses was looking after a flock of sheep up in the hills, and it was there that he saw an amazing sight. Come here, little guy. <laughs> I'll get you. <laughs> now I've got you. Huh? Moses, come closer. Uh, who's there? God, the Israelites in Egypt are unhappy because they are not free. Go to the Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. Why have you chosen me? Don't be afraid. I will be with you. But will they believe me? I will give you signs to show the people that I am with you. Throw your staff on the ground. Now reach down and pick it up by the tail. Trust me, the people will believe you. Now go. And so Moses returned to Egypt to do what God said. Are you Moses? I have heard about you. What are you doing back here after all these years? I am here because God sent me. He wants you to free the people of Israel. Oh, he does, does he? Too bad for him. Who is this God, anyway? I've never heard of him. Have you? No, no sir, your, your most, most royal, royal wonderful, wonderful highness. highness. Well, then. This god of yours must not exist, right? Yes, your most royal, wonderful highness. Right. You there, come here. We're too nice to the Israelites. After all, they have a big, strong god on their side. Tell my slave masters not to give them any more straw for the bricks they make. From now on, they have to find their own straw. Yes, your most royal wonderful. I said go! Ha! Don't try and tell me what to do. I'm the Pharaoh. It's time for your bath, your royal highness. Uh... I won't give up that easily. And so Moses returned. God wants you to let the Israelites go free. Oh, haven't we already done this? It'll take a miracle before I listen to another word you're saying. See the power of God, the only true and living God. Oh! Silence! Nothing but foolish tricks. Besides, watch this.
Think twice before you try to trick me again. I am not trying to trick you. I am warning you. God can perform many miracles. <laughs> that proves nothing. Get out of my sight. I'll be back. And the next morning, Moses did come back. Pharaoh, let the Israelites go free. If you do not, God will let plagues happen to Egypt. The plagues will bring very bad things. No! See for yourself the power of God. It is blood. <laughs> Just another magic trick. Ugh. Go away. You again? What do you want now? Let my people go. If you don't, God will let frogs come all over the land. Frogs will sleep in your bed and eat your food and... Frogs? I love frogs. Why, when I was a little boy... Uh, never mind about that right now. Who cares about a few frogs? Get out of here! Find Moses and bring him to me. Now. You, make the frogs go away. Do you promise to let the Israelites go free? Yes, yes, just get rid of these pesky things. God made the frogs go away, but the Pharaoh didn't keep his promise. He did not free the people of Israel. So God allowed more plagues to happen in Egypt. God let lots and lots of gnats come to Egypt. They flew everywhere. Flies flew everywhere. But the Pharaoh still wouldn't let the Israelites go, so the animals got very sick. And then boils grew on the skins of the Egyptians. And terrible hail fell down from the skies. And the locusts came. And ate their clothes. Next, everything was as dark as night for three whole days. Each time a plague happened to Egypt, the Pharaoh promised to let the people of Israel go free. But each time he changed his mind and broke his promise. Now will you let the people of Israel leave? No, I will not. I've tried to warn you, but you won't listen. Please hear me now, or you'll be very sorry. The last plague will be the worst. The firstborn sons of the Egyptians will die. What has your God done? He has taken my son from me. Leave Egypt at once and take your people with you. Moses told the Israelites to get ready to leave Egypt right away. He knew the Pharaoh might change his mind again, so they packed and left as fast as they could. I can't believe we're actually going. It's just as Moses promised. A land where we could be free. 
<laughs> it seems like a dream. But it's not a dream. At last, we're on our way home. Sing a while for a while, then scatter to and fro. Trusting Moses knows his way, singing as we go. Mighty Moses and the Israelites, thousands of sandals in the sand. Mighty Moses, what an amazing sight, leading us on to the promised land. The day has dawned to journey on to a brand new place, a fire will light on. And so, finally, the people of Israel left Egypt on the way to their homeland, the land of freedom. By day, a pillar of smoke guided them. And by night, a pillar of fire showed them the way. But back at the palace, the pharaoh had changed his mind again. I was a fool to let them go. Who will build our pyramids and grow our food and, and fan me when it is warm? We must get the Israelites back. Call my chariot. In the meantime, the Israelites had reached the Red Sea. Moses, look behind us! The Pharaoh's army! They'll be here soon! Oh no! Moses, what have you done to us? We would have been better off living unhappily in Egypt rather than dying here in the desert. Don't be afraid. God will protect us. Don't hurry, Moses. Rest tonight. Tomorrow morning, raise your hand and stretch out your staff over the sea. It will part, and you will be able to go through on dry land. Till morning. Then we'll recapture them. And when morning came, Moses stood by the sea and waved his hand over the waters. And the 
the sea parted, just as God had promised. Come on, follow me. Come again! What are we going to do? Just wait. Then the sea fell upon the Egyptian army and stopped them. Thank you, God, for saving us. The Israelites passed through the Sinai Desert on their way to the land of Israel. When they were hungry, God sent them food. Mother, look! What is it? It was sweet, tasty bread that God had sent to feed the people. The Israelites called it manna, which meant, what is it? Mm. When the Israelites were thirsty, God sent them water. Milk instead. <laughs> <laughs> when the Israelites reached Mount Sinai in the middle of the desert, they set up camp near the foot of the mountain. It was time for God to give the people his laws. Happening, Moses. What does God want? God is calling me. I am sure he has great plans for us. I must go ahead. And Moses climbed to the top of the mountain. I am ready for you. I have rules that I want to give the people of Israel. If they follow them, I will protect the people. Chisel out two stones and I will write them down. Always respect your father and mother. Do not kill anybody. Do not steal anything. God gave many other laws. He also told Moses how to build the home of worship where the Israelites would pray to God. God also told Moses that everybody should rest on the seventh day, just like he did when he created the world. Thank you, God. And this is how Moses led the people of Israel back to their homeland with the power of God and his sacred laws. These laws are called the Ten Commandments. Throughout the long journey, God helped Moses guide the Israelites home.
the world began, how God created it by hand, from mighty mountains to the raging sea, to every leaf on every single tree. It's in the holy book, just open up and take a look. Long ago, God sent his prophet Samuel to find the future king of the Israelites. Samuel, go to Jesse's house in Bethlehem. There you will find the new king over all Israel. Hmm, I wonder who that is. My sons, come into the house. There is a guest here to see you. Huh? Oh. David, you stay there and look after the sheep. We're going inside. Jesse, uh, you say you have eight sons? Yes, and they are such fine young men. Here they come. <laughs> oh! must be God's chosen one. No, Samuel. You are thinking too much about what he looks like. You must look inside. You must look at his heart. Hmm. Wait. There are only seven here. Don't you have another son? Yes, but he is the youngest and the smallest. See him off there guarding the sheep? Him? No, it couldn't be him. Could it? Thank you. I will leave now. You must look at his heart. What's your name, son? David. God has told me that you will be the new king of Israel someday. God is my friend. He helps me save my sheep. Yes, and one day I hope you save us all. Goodbye, David. Goodbye, and God bless. David's three older brothers were called away. David, come over here and pray with me as I bless the men of the family for battle. To go fight for the people of Israel. Eliab, Abinadab, Shammah, may the Lord bless you and keep you and bring you safely home from battle. But Father, what, son? You didn't bless me. I want to fight for Israel. Hmm. Don't worry about us, Father. We're old enough. And strong enough. 
We can hardly wait to fight the enemy of God's chosen people, the evil Philistines. We'll win and be home before you know it, David. Hey, wait, everybody! Wait! Don't leave without me. Please, please let me go, Father. I want to fight for the people of Israel, too. <laughs> What's so funny? I may be small, but I'm brave. Why, just the other day, I saved our whole flock of sheep from a huge, ferocious lion. I hit him with a stone from my sling ah, and knocked him clean out. Want to see how good I'm getting? Whoa! No, David, not now. First, I had to sock that lion right on his nose. Bang! And then I shook that rascal by his whiskers. And then I pulled his jaws apart and rescued our little lamb. And, and then... And then... I'm not afraid of those Philistines. So please, Father, please let me go fight, too. Whoa! <laughs> Guarding sheep isn't exactly the same as fighting the big bad Philistines, little David. Stay home, little brother. Father needs your help to watch over the sheep, and Father can watch over you. Grow up, little lamb. You may be brave enough to fight, but you're just too little. Dinadab, Shama, time to go. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye. 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 Bye. Goodbye. Someday I'll go to battle for the people of Israel, Father. Someday. Now the two great armies met for war in the middle of a vast valley. King Saul led the army of Israelites. But the enemy, the Philistines, had a giant on their side. The giant came marching across the valley toward the army of the Israelites. His legs were as big as tree trunks, his arms were strong as iron, and his steps made the whole earth tremble. <laughs> I am Goliath, the giant! And all of you are nothing but King Saul's little servants. Even if all of you fight me together, you can never beat me! <laughs> so swear yourselves. I dare you choose just one man brave enough to fight. Uh huh? Not me. Not me. Uh, not me either. <laughs> <laughs> Just one man. If he beats me, all of my men will be your servants. But if I slay him, all of you shall be our servants forever. Oh. Now, who is brave enough to fight? A giant! Just step forward! I'll be waiting!
Every morning and evening for 40 days, Goliath marched to the center of the valley and gave his great battle cry. enough. You are nothing but cowards! He said it. He's right. You bet he's right. Well, what do my brothers think? Could I? I... Whoa. Ooh. No, don't even think about it. I'll try to... Ooh. You're not risking your life for him. Maybe I'll... Neither are you, Eliab. It's not worth it. Not even to marry King Saul's daughter. Oh, but wouldn't it be great? Being rewarded with the princess's hand in marriage for beating the giant? Ah. <sighs> <sighs> Oh, I wish this was over and we could go home to Father in Bethlehem. The king will come up with a plan. You watch. <laughs> Bet I can get five in a row. Now remember, never be afraid. David, that was a good shot, son. Did you see that, Father? Maybe now you let me go join the army and fight with King Saul and the Israelites. No, son, I told you before, they won't take you. You're too young to be a soldier, and you've got to get some more meat on those bones of yours. But Father, I'm strong, and I can run like a deer. I said no, David. Now do as I ask, and take this food to your brothers. Then hurry home to tell me how they are. Now be careful, son. I pray you will bring good news. enough to fight? Are all the Israelites nothing but cowards? Oh, my God, my God. Abinadab! 
Shamo, what are you doing? Why are you running away? You'd better run yourself. If you know what's good for you. Watch out, boy! But who is that? It's Goliath, the giant. He's the champion for the Philistines against the people of Israel. But why won't anyone fight back? What do you mean? Look at him! He's too strong! He's over ten feet tall! None of us could even lift his spear! But what about King Saul? King Saul will give a rich reward to the man who slays that giant! He'll even let him marry his own daughter. And none of you are brave enough to try? No! Because none of us want to die for no reason! Eliab, why won't you fight? Ab Abinadab, why are you afraid? Shama, are you afraid of the giant too? All the soldiers are afraid, little David. Yes, little brother. Aren't you afraid too? You're too young to be here at all, David. Yes, little brother. Go home and take care of sheep where it's safe. No, I can't. Someone has to fight Goliath. But who? Everyone here is afraid. I'll fight the giant. I'm not afraid. You? Yes. God is stronger than Goliath. And God will help me. Go tell King Saul. I'm not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> I have news for King Saul. What news? <laughs> so, there's this Israelite champion, <laughs> who's really a young shepherd boy, <laughs> says he wants to fight for King Saul and the Israelites. <laughs> 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 says God will help him fight the giant, <laughs> and he's never even been trained as a soldier. <laughs> Well, tell the foolish lad to go home. King Saul is no use for jokes out here on the battlefield. <laughs> tell the boy. Tell the boy to come here. But sire. Joab, bring the boy here to me. Now. I wonder who he is. I wonder why he's the only one brave enough to fight the giant. I understand a giant of a man and I am not His spear appears to be the size of a small tree and all I've got is a slingshot This Philistine is large but I This Philistine is large, but I know who's in charge. I have a giant of a god, you see, bigger than the trouble in front of me. Even nine feet tall, starts looking pretty small, next to the giant of a god with me. I have a giant. 
That's the little hero? Looks like he couldn't fight a flea. Make way for the little giant killer. I don't see any giant killer. I don't see anyone. Neither do I. Silence! Make way for this boy. Huh? huh? I said make way for the shepherd boy. The king wants to see him. Oh, oh yes. yes. Certainly, Certainly commander. commander. Right away, sir. <laughs> Your Majesty, I am... <laughs> Silence! Let the boys speak. Please, sir, don't be afraid of the giant. With God's help, I'll fight him for you. I'll fight Goliath for you and for all of the people of Israel. But how can a boy like you fight Goliath? You can't match him in size or strength or skill, my boy. Why, you've never even been trained for battle. It's true, Your Majesty. I am young and small, but God will make me strong. <laughs> if God saves my sheep, God will save me from this giant. Now let me fight the giant for you and the people of Israel. Yes, little David, and may God be with you. Joab, get my sword and shield, get my armor, Put them on young David. Huh? Joab, I said dress the boy for battle. Huh? Yes. Yes, your majesty. Well, didn't you hear King Saul? Do as he says. <laughs> I can hardly pick up your sword, Your Majesty. And your shield is much too heavy for me. But, uh, David... God's help is all the armor I need. Please help me, God. Help me fight Goliath the giant for the people of Israel. Can you hear me, Goliath the giant? I am ready to fight. Think you can fight with sticks and stones? You'll be sorry! You fight me with your sharp sword and heavy spear, Goliath, but I fight you in the name of God. chased the Philistines away. The boy killed the giant! Goliath is dead! Where is the boy? Joab, bring him here to me. Little brother! It is you! Our brave baby brother David! Bring the boy here to King Saul! Thank you, my son. Thank God, Your Majesty. And that is how little David beat Goliath the giant with the help of God. This was only one of the many great adventures God had planned for David. David the shepherd boy grew up to become a great king who served God. Throughout David's long and adventurous life, 
he always remembered the comforting words of God. It was a very sad day when the king of Babylon surrounded Jerusalem with his army. His name was Nebuchadnezzar. Attack! The king and his army stole things that belonged to God. Then they destroyed his temple. The king then ordered that the stolen things be taken back to Babylon, but that was not all he stole. Ashpenaz, take the brightest young men in Jerusalem. They must be very healthy and very smart, so they can work for me in my palace. Don't touch those. They are from the temple. They belong to God. Take everything back to our kingdom. So the holy cups and plates belonging to God and Jerusalem's finest young men were carried hundreds of miles away to Babylon. Among those taken were Daniel and his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And even though Daniel and his three friends were hundreds of miles away from their home and the house of God, they stayed loyal to God. Are you studying hard? This is impossible. We'll never learn to read and write your language. 
God was with Daniel and his friends. Your language is very interesting, Your Majesty. Teach us more. God gave them more wisdom than the other young students, and they loved him for it. In time, the king saw how the boys were ten times smarter than all the wizards, magicians, and wise men in Babylon. And God gave Daniel something special, the ability to know and understand dreams. It was a good thing, too. King Nebuchadnezzar began having a strange dream. Arioch! A dream that kept him up night after night. Bring me my best magician, wizard and wise man. They must tell me what this dream means. Well, what are you waiting for? On my way, O oh king. Sleep, sleep. I've got to get my sleep. O oh, king, live forever. What do you want to know? Ask any question. We have all the answers. Thank the gods. I have a most important question for you. Magician, wizard, and wise man. No, he's the wizard. He's the wise man. He's the magician, O oh, king. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Do you want to know what is colder? Snow? Or a dog's nose? Or how to turn goat's milk into cloth? Or the number of giants living inside the earth? No, no, no! I have been having a very strange dream night after night. That's simple. Piece of cake. No problem. So tell me what it means. Okay, but tell us what your dream was. Then we'll tell you what it means. Oh, no. If you are so smart, first tell me what I dreamed, then tell me what it means. You want us to tell you what you already know? Then tell you what you don't know? But you'll know if we know what you already know? Yes, yes, yes. I knew you were smart. Are you kidding? No way! Forget it! Tell me what I dreamed right now, or, or I'll punish all of you. But no one on Earth can do such a thing. Only the gods can tell you that. And they don't live on Earth. That's it. Now I'm mad. I'll not only punish the three of you, but... But... Ariok! Get rid of all the wizards, magicians, and wise men in Babylon! Well, what are you waiting for? On my way, O oh king. Arioch went to Daniel's house. He told him about the king's order to punish every wise man in Babylon. Wait, Arioch. Please, don't harm anyone tonight. Daniel, you're my friend. I'll wait, but only until tomorrow morning. Let's pray, my friends. God must help us understand the king's secret dream. No one should be harmed over this. Wake up, Daniel. I've come to explain the king's secret dream to you. Thank you, God. Oh, king, there's someone here to tell you what your dream means. Impossible. Who could be smarter than my wizard, magician, and wise man? One of the captives from Judah. You can tell me about my dream? No, not I. Is this some joke, Arioch? But God in heaven can explain all secret things. Oh, I know what your dream means. I know what your dream means. God has told me to pass the word about what I've seen and what I've heard. It's a simple message, sir, with a truly holy theme. Oh, I know what your dream means. Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, believe me, 
It's my pleasure to come here to you and shed some light. I've been praying to God and this may sound awfully odd But I understand the dream you had last night Saw a statue with a head of gold, he was bronze and iron with big clay toes Symbolized the kingdoms of this earth the golden face that I saw shining means down here you're the number one king. I'm giving you the facts for all they're worth. Oh, I know what your dream means. Oh, I know what your dream means. God has told me to pass the word about what I've seen and what I heard. It's a simple message, sir, with a truly holy theme. Oh, I know what your That rolled on down and brought the statue to the ground it Shows that earthly kingdoms soon will pass Yeah, the interpretation is that out of all the nations God's is the kingdom that will last Oh, I know what your dream means Oh, I know what your dream means God has told me to pass the word about what I've seen it's a simple message, sir, with a truly holy theme. Oh, I know what your dream means. Oh, I know what your dream means. Oh, I know what your dream means. God has told me to pass the word about what I've seen and what i heard. It's a simple message, sir, with a truly holy Exactly right. You are smarter than all of my wizards, magicians, and wise men put together. Not me, sire. God told me this secret, not because I'm greater than anyone else, but so you can know what it means. But what does it mean? You're king for now, but neither you nor your kingdom will last forever. But God's kingdom will last forever. Your God is the God of gods the king of all kings. Your God tells people things they can't possibly know. You deserve a reward. From this moment on, you will rule over Babylon for me and be in charge of all my wise men. O oh, king, I beg you, do not punish them. Of course, anything you ask. Uh, what was your name again? Daniel, if I am to rule, I need help. I have three wise friends. Make Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego leaders of Babylon as well. It shall be done, Daniel. Many years passed, and after King Nebuchadnezzar left the throne, his son, Belshazzar, became king. Daniel stayed in Babylon, and every day, three times a day, he faced Jerusalem and prayed to God. After so many years, Daniel was completely forgotten by the new king, Belshazzar. One night, King Belshazzar had a big party. The foolish king used cups and plates stolen from the house of God. <laughs> Is everyone having fun? By drinking from the stolen cups, he dishonored God. He only believed in false gods made from gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. <laughs> well, let us thank the gods for this wonderful party.
Wizards, magicians, wise men, come here, quickly! What does it say? Read it to me. Many, meany, tickle person. Many, meany, tickle person. Tell you what, anyone who can read those words uh, gets a gold chain! Eeny, meeny, tackle, parsnip. Eeny, meeny, tackle, parsnip. Eeny, meeny, tackle, parsnip. How about this? A fine purple robe fit for a king. I'll even make you third highest ruler in my kingdom. Impossible. Infeasible. Inconceivable. Is there no one in my kingdom who can read these strange words? I know of someone, my son. Tell me, mother, who, who is it? In the days of your father, this man had wisdom like the gods. Call for Daniel. Are you Daniel? The one who believes in the god who created heaven and earth? Look, the gold chain, the purple robe, and third highest ruler in the kingdom. Everything is yours if you can read these words. King Belshazzar, keep your gifts or give them to someone else. Oh, then you can't read it either. But I can, and I will tell you what it says. Your father was so proud and stubborn he lost his kingdom. God rules over everything on earth, and He decides who will be king. You know all this, but you aren't sorry for the terrible things you've done. Tonight, you used cups and plates stolen from His temple. You have dishonored God. God himself sent the hand that wrote these words. Mene, God has counted the days until your kingdom will end. Tikal, you are not good enough to be king any longer. Ufarsin, your kingdom will be given to some other people. Daniel, I know you speak the truth. King Belshazzar kept his promise and gave Daniel the purple robes and golden chain and made him the third highest ruler in the land. What Daniel said did come true that very night. Another ruler, King Darius, took over the kingdom. The new king picked three men to rule the kingdom. And since God had made Daniel very wise, Daniel was one of the three. Soon, King Darius saw how Daniel was better than the other two men, and he planned to make Daniel the one and only ruler of the land. That made the other two men very angry. The two mean wise men wanted to make Daniel look bad. But he always told the truth and was not lazy nor dishonest. <sighs> we must make Daniel look bad. But how? He is just too good. I have an idea. Daniel really, really believes in his God. We will <laughs> use that against him.
It's me, God. Daniel. I was right. Daniel faces Jerusalem and prays to his God three times a day. This plan will work. I can't wait to tell the king. Hey, it's my plan. I'll tell the king. Not if I get to him first. Why, you... Theirs was a terrible plan, a plan to get rid of Daniel. Oh, King Darius, you have many enemies. And we know how to find them. For 30 days, let's have a holiday throughout the kingdom. For 30 days, no one can pray to any god or any human except to you. Hmm, I kind of like the sound of that. But here's the best part. If they don't pray to you, they must be your enemy. So we throw them into the, the lion's den. den. By the gods, uh, I mean by me, I like it. A holiday for 30 days. Yes, a great holiday. A feast like no other. I must tell Daniel. It's a wonderful new law. Daniel heard about the new law, but he was still loyal to God. He's breaking the king's new law. My plan worked. Daniel is praying to his God. Let's throw him into the lion's den. Wait, it wasn't your plan. It was my plan. Was not. I'm much wiser than you. Oh, King Darius, we found someone who doesn't obey your new law. Unbelievable! Who is this terrible person? He is the Israelite, Daniel. No, not him. He prays three times a day to his God, just as he did before you made the law. <laughs> Shall it be two lions or three? I can't hurt Daniel. He's a trusted advisor, and more importantly, my friend. But King Darius, as you know... The law says no law given by the king can be changed. That's right. That's right. All right. Take Daniel to the lion's den. My dear friend, what have I done? I'm sorry, Daniel. I don't want to do this. You have always been loyal to your God. Maybe he will save you from the lions. Don't worry. I won't be alone down there. So that no one would move the stone and let Daniel out of the den, King Darius sealed the opening with his royal seal. King Darius could not sleep that night. He was very worried about his friend. The next morning, King Darius ran to the lion's den. Oh, Daniel, has your God kept you safe? Open the lion's den! But there was nothing to fear. <laughs> You're up early, King Darius. Daniel was safe and sound. I can't believe my eyes. You're okay. When the lions attacked, God saved me. He sent an angel to close their mouths the lions didn't hurt me because God knew I hadn't done anything wrong and I haven't done anything wrong to you, O King.
Daniel. I'm so happy. And you call yourselves wise men? Take them away. That was a terrible plan. Don't look at me, it was your big idea. Was not, was too. King Darius wrote a letter to everyone in the world. Peace and happiness to all. From now on, all of you will respect the God of Daniel. He is greater than any other God because he uses miracles to rescue and save people. Daniel continued working for King Darius and always stayed loyal to God. And God blessed him for the rest of his life.